Good morning, Overcomers. Thank you for joining our devotional service this morning. Today is day 10 of our 10-day series entitled 10 Promises of God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we will never stop thanking you for your mercies and your goodness. Thank you again for waking us up this morning. We pray for your mighty presence right here, right now, as we go through this worship service. Be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, today is the 10th day of our 10 day series. We're going to do things a bit different this morning. And um, this is how we're going to do it. We, I'm going to speak for maybe 15 minutes instead of the whole half hour. And then after that, I'm going to give you guys the references for the 10 promises in case anybody has missed any days. So, um, I got your back, guys. I got your back. I got your back. I got you. I got you, overcomers. I got you. So I'm going to give you the references for those 10 promises, okay? Kind of catch you up a little, a little. And then you're gonna, you, you'll be reading them on your own, the promises. Put them in your uh, archive of promises. And, um, and then after that, we're going to take a few minutes to share testimonies of how have the 10 days um helped you or the 10 promises helped you in your walk with the lord you know any testimonies you want to share with us we would really appreciate it and i know god has used this 10 these 10 days to bless me like exponentially and i'm gonna share that with you guys also okay so with that said oh today also instead of playing the usual song i'm gonna play the theme song overcomer okay I'm going to play the theme song over comic because the fact that we're making it, we made it through the 10th day. We, that's another milestone in our lives as overcomers. We continue to overcome in Jesus name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now let us go on with today's verse. It's taken from second Peter three, verse nine. Today's verse, second Peter three, verse nine. Uh, get ready to write it. Get ready to write it. We want that inside of us. We want to make sure we memorize it. We know it from the back of our head. We know it so good so that the Holy Spirit can find words in us. The more word, the more power. The more word, the more power in Jesus' name. Okay, there it, there, there it is. Uh, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Keep typing, keep typing. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now that's all of it. That's all of it. I'm gonna repeat it, giving giving you guys a, uh, a chance to type it. Okay, let's start again. Let's start again. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise. As some men count slackness. Let me repeat that again. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness. But is long suffering to us word. But is long suffering to us word. Not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. So if we understand correctly what this verse is saying, you see, God promises to come back. 
Jesus is coming back. He's coming back. We know Jesus is second return. He's coming back. He's coming back. But yet we haven't seen him yet. What's going on? We haven't seen him yet. What's going on? So we're going to expand on that. Let me read the inspiration. We're going to expand on that in a few minutes. The inspiration says, given how generous God is with his love and gift to us. He's so loving, so loving, so loving. Um, I want you to write in the chat box. He is so loving. He is so loving. He is so loving. One would think that he might be a bit vengeful and spiteful when people reject his word. Yeah. If God, if God were human like us, I mean, you know, Jesus was came as human. That's not the human we're talking about. If he was like us, like sinful like us, maybe that's what I should say. He would probably be very spiteful and vengeful toward us because especially the, for the many times we've rejected him. Even us as overcomers, we have rejected God many times in our lives. And the fact that we are, we are overcomers is not anything that we have done on our own. It's really God's grace and mercy. It's God's grace and mercy. And it's interesting, yesterday while I was doing my own personal worship and I was listening to the song Amazing Grace, and all of a sudden, like, I, I felt like I was a like, God, 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 it's only by your grace. It's only grace. It's only your grace. It's only your grace. And, and I was like, God, I, I, I need more grace. I need more grace. I need more grace. I need more grace. You know, I, I have not yet arrived. I need more grace. I need more grace. And I said, Lord, there, there is still room for improvement. There is still room for improvement. I need more grace because we understand that. Even though, praise the Lord, even though, praise the Lord, we are overcomers in Jesus' name. We are overcomers. We are overcomers in Jesus' name. That doesn't mean we have yet. We have arrived because we're still living in this world. We're still facing challenges. We're still living in, the, in a world of chaos. We're still facing temptation. But we know the Lord will help us endure. He tells us to endure as we saw yesterday, to endure as we go through these trials and resist the temptations of the enemy do not give up do not give up on the lord do not curse god and die you know do not deny god hold on hold on hold on okay so we have not yet arrived as overcomers we are on overcomers because we know jesus already accomplished it for us at the cross and we're walking in it we claim it we claim it okay and as overcomers knowing all that that's why we also have to be patient with others. We also have to be patient with others, right? Jesus is long suffering, patient, long suffering. He's patient with us. He's patient with us, right? And it's the, the other continues to say, in fact, the exact opposite is the case. God shows extra patience. And of course, he does not want anyone to perish. If he did, why would he have ever sent Jesus on earth? So see that patience God God has for us is the is the reason for his slackness is the reason he's not coming yet because if he comes a lot of people if he comes already a lot of people will not make it you know i i often say that i often say god i i often say that god jesus is on his way he's just making rest stops like like almost like every second he's making rest stops why because he's giving people He's giving those out there who have not yet surrendered their hearts to him an opportunity, another chance, another chance, another chance. God is forever patient. In fact, um, Exodus 34 says that one of his name is long suffering. His kindness, you know, goodness, um, his loving kindness. Let me see. He's gracious. Yeah, he is gracious. Long suffering. That's long suffering is also one of his name, which means patience. He's patient. He's forever patient with us. So let us not count his slackness as if he's not coming. He is coming. He he promised. He promised that he is coming. Guess what? He is coming because he's not meant that he should lie. The Bible tells us, God's word will not come back to him void. So. It's interesting that so we need to exercise that same patience toward other people as well in our lives. And it's just so happened uh, this week. I, I happened to see a certain people, a certain person, I should say, doing a certain something. And to be honest with you, I, I was, I, I, I was getting ready to kind of throw stones, and then all of a sudden the Lord reminded me 
Yeah, once upon a time, I did the same thing. I did the same thing that the certain person, I saw the certain person did that, you know, who did that certain thing. I, you know, so as overcomers, you know, we also have to exercise the same patience toward others. We're not overcomers because we've always been over, been, we've always been overcomers. It's only by grace. It's by God's grace. It's his grace. It's his mercy. It's because of his long suffering. Sometimes when I think of God's long suffering toward me, I, I'm like, I cry. I was like, God, wow, your patience, your patience with me. Oh man, I'm in awe. Your patience for me. Wow, how do you do this? I'm in awe. So we need to exercise the very same thing toward others. So God's slackness is for our good, really. Is for our good. He's giving. Let, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You, you, you heard me say it's for our good. And yet we are overcomers, right? It's for our good and of course the good of those others who have not yet come into the fold. For our good still because there is still room for improvement. Right? You guys understand that? I want you to write that in the chat box, please. There is room for improvement. There is room for improvement. There is room for improvement. Type it, type it. There is room for improvement. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There is room for improvement. We have not yet arrived. There is room for improvement. We're not overcomers to look down to look down at others. We're not overcomers to criticize and throw stones at others. We're not overcomers for that. In fact, we are overcomers to exemplify Christ, to show Christ in the way that we live, in the way that we interact with others, to love others like Jesus loved others. That's why we overcome us. That's why we overcome us. Just remember that. Just remember. Just remember that. We overcome us. God is still working on us. He's still working on us. There's room for improvement. It's only by grace. It's his grace. It's his grace. Let us extend, extend mercy toward others too. Show grace toward others. Don't give them what they deserve. If Jesus gave us what we deserve, we would not be here. We would not be overcomers today. No, we would not be overcomers. He gave, he, he, he gave us what he deserved. What was his, actually. He gave us what was his. In other words, he gave us a crown of gold and took our crown of thorn. He didn't give us what we deserve. Grace, grace and mercy. Grace, grace. Instead of throwing stones at people, when we see that they do something that now we're not doing, by the grace of God, let us show mercy. Let us love. Let us show kindness. Show grace. Let us pray for them instead. You know, when I when uh, I saw that person, I was like. When God reminded me, yeah, once upon a time, you know, you did that too. And I was, okay, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on that person. Have mercy. Instead, I decided it's best to pray for them and deliver them from what they were going through. Yeah. We all can use mercy. You know, I like the verse in, 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 in Psalm that says, God's mercies renews on our behalf every morning. Every morning, God mercies renews on our behalf. Yep, yep. Now let me, let us go to the prayer that is attached to this devotional. It says, forgive me, almighty God, for going back on my promises. I have lied and deceived people for selfish reasons, thinking that my needs are more important than theirs. I am therefore so ashamed and also so grateful that you do not behave as I do. Hmm. I'm glad. I'm glad God doesn't behave as I do. No, you are always there for me as long as I ask it. I ask you today, Lord, to always be there for me as you always have been. And remind me that you always are. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Overcomers. Overcomers. Just remember. 
just remember the reason for God's slackness and coming is to give us overcomers and the others an opportunity to repent. We still have things to, to, to repent of. We have not yet arrived. You know, this this message I'm delivering right now, I don't know where that, you know, I got God, you know, I, I don't know where it come from. It come from the Lord. Uh, in other words, I did not plan it. I did not plan this one. I did not plan this one. God knows what he's doing. He knows we need, he knows we needed this message this morning, obviously. I did not plan this one. We're not overcomers because we have arrived. Let us not think we got it going on and, and, and then we just like become complacent. We got to hold on. We got to keep fighting the good fight. We got to keep fighting the good fight. God gave us 10 promises during the ten, these 10, 10 days. He's only giving us 10 promises like 10 days at a time kind of. We know, like I've said before, God has many, many more promises for us. So this is not it. It's not enough, okay? Don't think you've got it going on. It's not enough. Go after more. Go after more. Go after more. Read the word. Get more, 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 forever, more, more. Just keep getting. Remember, Jesus wants you to walk in it. Walk in it. Walk in it. Take it. The promises. The promises are there. There are more promises. Ten is that is not all. Okay, just so you guys know, ten is not all. I think I'm gonna stop here, and then I'm going to go back to um, the first day and remind you guys of the the verses, the the references. All right, day one. The reference for day one was from Isaiah 41 verse 13. Okay, you guys will read that on your own. And the reference for day two is Isaiah 43, verses two and three. Okay, day two, that's day two. Day three is at Second Chronicles 7, verse 14. Second Chronicles 7, verse, verse 14. Day four, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Day 4, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Day 5, John 3, verses 16 and 17. John 3, verses 16 and 17. Day 6, Joshua 1, verse 9. Joshua 1, verse 9. Day 7, Romans 8, verse 28. That's our inspiration for our theme, overcomer, turning your pain into, into gain. Day seven, Romans eight, verse 28. Day eight, Proverbs three, verses five and six. Proverbs three, verses five and six. Day nine, James one, verse 12. Day nine, verse one, James one, verse 12. Day 10, that's today. Second Peter three verse nine. Second Peter three verse nine. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now I'm going to open the mic for um for testimonies of how have the ten days or the ten promises help you in your walk with the Lord. And uh, I'm gonna start by sharing my testimony of how God has used these 10 days to help me. And um, during one of the 10 days, we, one of our devotional was, God knows us more than we know ourselves. And um, I shared that once upon a time I was out there prayer warring or prayer outreach doing prayer outreach and I met this lady she she was also a Christian and after I prayed with her she prayed with me and then 
after that we engage in a in an extended spiritual conversation and then so for some reason while she was talking all of a sudden like my eyes like locked on her lips my eyes were just locked on her lips and i i know i'm not supposed to stare it's rude but I, it was not under my control i couldn't control it i just saw my eyes locked on her lips and then after a while god said to me and to and to think no god said to me look how well she speaks and to think that she has a speech impediment and then god continued to say i can do that for you too i mean for the life of me i was like shocked i didn't know i had a speech impediment this is to show you how well god knows us he knows our deeper secret that we don't even know i did not know i had a speech impediment all i know was I was afraid of public speaking. That's all I know. Every time I had to speak in public, I was like, my life, it's like my life was like turned upside down. I never associated that fear with, a, with speech impediment. I thought it was public speaking, but yet it was never public speaking. It was a speech impediment. So now, having been reminded of that during these 10 days, and following that day when I shared that testimony, all of a sudden, like, I can't speak. I'm like, every time I try to speak, I'm like chewing up the words. I'm like, I'm, my words are like coming out slurred. And it's like, it's, it's just a complete mess, you know? I, and I realized, and then after a while I was like, wait a minute, what's going on? What's going on? Why am I thinking speech impediment when God already said, I can do that for you too. And we know when God says he can do something for us, it's already done because Jesus accomplished everything on Calvary. So instead, of lingering, of keeping my mind on on speech impediment, I be, I decided, you know what? Let me put on, let me pronounce um, affirmations upon my life, and I kept saying, I can speak well. In fact, I speak very well. I speak very well. I speak very well. So I kept repeating it. I kept repeating it, and that's how I was able to go to my ten days, to the these ten days, the rest of the ten days. God is amazing. God is absolutely amazing. And um, also, I want to share another one, and then after that, I'm going to give you guys the mic. How, how God used my son as my Jethro. You know, you guys know Jethro in the Bible, uh, Moses' uh, stepfather. How God used my son as my Jethro to help me so that I do not uh, become overwhelmed doing this. Because the reality is... Um, even though I get, we do this at 6 a.m., I have to get up like sometime at 3 a.m. to prepare, to get ready for this. So, and it, it, it was beginning to take a toll on my, on my health. I was beginning to have runny nose and, you know, and sneezing and stuff like that. And, but yet I had already made up my mind to say, oh, we're going to do this seven day, you know, seven day. We're going to do it all seven day. We're going to make sure, you know, we make God's word our daily bread. We, we you know, that I, I, that's what I said. And I wanted to keep my word. And yet God used my son to, to, to make, make, me, make me realize, help me realize that, no, we need balance. We need balance. And that's when I realized, okay, even though I'm going to make God's word my daily bread, but at least we can, I can take the weekend off. I, like my son says, sleep in. He can sleep in during the weekend. I can sleep in during the weekend also and do worship, my personal worship. When I get up, I do my personal worship at my own time. It doesn't have to be like 6 a.m., like seven days. It was taking a toll on me. So this is how God used the, the you know these 10 days to help me.
Interlude. Two.